Is there a genuine conflict between science and the Christian faith? Or is this conflict merely apparent due to perhaps faulty interpretations and understanding of the record of nature and the words of Scripture? I'm joined today by Dr. Gavin Ortland, who is a Christian scholar and a pastor to help unpack some of these issues. Uh, Gavin, your training is in church history, and it might be surprising to people to learn that science-faith conflicts are not just simply a contemporary phenomena, that there have been times in church history where conflicts have erupted between the science of the day and the biblical interpretations of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, so what can we learn from church history when it comes to these kind of issues? Yeah, I think there's a lot of things we can learn, and even just recognizing the value of engaging church history is a, kind of a first step that, especially for evangelicals, it feels like we've got some work to do there. Uh, sometimes we think of the 1980s as ancient history, you know, and anything certainly before that is just totally outside of our sphere of uh, awareness. And, um, yeah, I you know, I never expected that two of the great interests in my uh, studies, uh, church history and then science issues, doctrine of creation, whatever, come into contact with each other. But I think one of the great values is just the the perspective that it gives you. It's sort of like if you walk into the library after school and there's this great debate happening and there's two sides and it's been happening for an hour and you just walk in. If you just hear the last three minutes of the debate, it'd be kind of tough to feel confident about which side won or how to size things up. Um, it's similar with church history, learning, you know, we're a part of this tradition. We're a part of a conversation that's been happening for so long. And I just think part of, uh, uh, you know, we're a part of the body of Christ as, as Christians. And there's value in learning what other brothers and sisters in Christ have worked through and what we can learn from them. So specifically when it comes to science faith issues, what are um, some of the main ideas that we could apply then to current conflicts? I think for me personally, uh, one of the big ones is the struggle with heliocentrism and geocentrism starting in the 16th century with Copernicus and then through Galilei. And um, there's a, a sadness there because the church did not respond well always to the new scientific evidence in favor of heliocentrism. And it took some time uh, for the church to accept heliocentrism. There were certain verses that seemed to indicate geocentrism, and there was some struggle there. And I think that's a legacy that is helpful to remember because it sensitizes us to uh, other concerns other than just resist secularism. You know, there's other dangers. That, there are times where we really need to listen carefully to what the science is saying and um, be humble and consider we might be wrong in how we're understanding something. Um, other things would be the interpretation of Genesis 1. It has a very complicated history, a very diverse history. It's not simplistic as some people portray it. I think we can learn a lot about uh, insights into that text um, from church history. And also just the broader concept of creation, the doctrine of creation. Um, you know, Christians have been uh, wrestling with that doctrine for hundreds of years, and there's a lot we can learn from their efforts. And sometimes the way they approach it is a little different than what we would expect, and it might um, just push us in a different direction than we expect and kind of sensitize us to different concerns that previously we weren't aware of. That's the great thing of studying church history. There's differences, too, to the conversations, and so it kind of pulls us in different directions. It's kind of like visiting a foreign country, you know, you get to know a new culture and it just broadens you in a way and you don't see your own culture in the same way again. That's, uh, for me, a great metaphor for the value of studying church history.